What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So I want to go ahead and continue this series of top five. This was a requested series, by the way. Top five most hated players in NBA history. At least my top five hated most players. Number five, just do a brief recap. But number five, I had Eddie House. I know y'all like, why the fuck I had Eddie House? I don't know. He, he, I guess Eddie House was just sort of a, a precursor to this fucking good dude right here, man. But uh, number five, Eddie House. Uh, number four, I had Antoine Walker. Number three, Trey Young. Number two, LeBron James. Number one, this fucking guy right here, Draymond Green. Now, where would I start with this dude? Well, number one, the fact that he seems to believe that he's a great player. This is a guy that once said during a broadcast, I believe, an all-star broadcast, that the only guy who could be compared to his career, the only guy whose career compared to his was LeBron's. Um, this is a man that compared uh, his role with Michael Jordan's on the team often compares himself to Michael Jordan um, often just talks in a way as if the only thing that's stopping him from putting up monster numbers is the role that he plays on his team once disparaging Charles Barkley by saying oh I could put up 20 and 10 on a bad team like Charles Barkley if I wanted to but then when he had the opportunity to do that, right? When he had the opportunity to do that, when both Steph Curry and Klay Thompson were injured, guess who wasn't able to do that? As a matter of fact, there were many games when, in my suspicion at least, in my opinion, Draymond Green, these games were on national TV a couple of years ago, he would purposely get in foul trouble or purposely do things to get himself ejected because he didn't want to be embarrassed by the fact that he couldn't carry a team. And there's actually the stats and, and numbers to uh, support the theory that oftentimes when Steph Curry is not there, he tries to get himself ejected because he doesn't want to be put up to scrutiny as being the leader or the supposed best player on that team. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though he barks like he is. He gets called the leader of the team, uh, you know, the, the, the elder statesman of the team, whatever the fuck you want to call it, the emotional leader. And emotional is correct, but he's not a leader. He is emotional, but he's not the leader. Okay? Um, you don't punch out a teammate. Yeah, guys get into it. Yes, Michael Jordan got into it with Steve Kerr. Absolutely. You know, Jordan haters love to bring that up. But this is the difference here. The difference is this. Michael Jordan immediately apologized to Steve Kerr. Personally. Draymond Green went on a media speaking tour apologizing to the media for what he did in so many words but never confirmed by Jordan Poole and I think his father never personally apologizing to Jordan uh, to Jordan Poole for what he did never did it or reported it never did it and then you get mad it's not even a, a real basketball heat of the moment passion thing, like not making excuses for Jordan, but it was related to the actual it was related to actual basketball he felt like Steve Kerr was getting favorable calls, and you know yeah, it was still wrong, but it was basketball, you punched out the motherfucker and tried to knee him into consciousness because A, you lost a roasting, roasting session, and B you low-key mad because this dude about to get the bag that you think you deserve. 
And from what I read, he been roasting your ass. He was with Bugs Bunny to your Daffy Duck. He kept out fucking maneuvering you when it came to the fucking wisecracking and, and the quick wit. You got mad because he told you the truth. That you are a backpack for number 30. You're a burden. You're a dude he got to carry. He told you the motherfucking truth. Nigga. So, of course, that's what you do. When someone gets in the way of your money, when their services are no longer needed, because Jordan Poole did far more in that playoff run for his team than you ever did. Just like you use KD. You use KD to get two of your four rings. Then, after what you said, we was winning before you and we don't need, we will after you. Which actually happened, but not because of your fucking ass. You did nothing in the 2022 NBA Finals. You did absolutely jack shit. They won in spite of you. As a matter of fact, as it's been pointed out time and time again, you cost them championships. You've cost them probably two championships, definitely one more. You did that. You. You team cancer. Then, the fact that when you look at your numbers, what you actually do, triple singles. You've never averaged 20 points a game. You've never even averaged 15 points a game. You've never even averaged 15 and 10 in a season. You've never averaged 10 rebounds in a season. You've never averaged 9 assists in a season. But you're supposed to be this walking triple-double. As Charles Barkley put it, you're a walking triple single. As a matter of fact, let's see something here. Let's look at all-time career triple-double list. Russell Westbrook is number one in 198. He's been stuck on that number for quite some time. Number two is Oscar Robertson, 181. Now, of course, this is the official list because <clears throat> if you do the unofficial list, more than likely Wilt Chamberlain is far and away the all-time leader in triple doubles, which adds another feather in his cap, in my opinion, to the GOAT argument. But it is what it is. Uh, number three is Magic Johnson, 138. Nicole Jokic, 117. Number five, LeBron, 109. Jason Kidd, 107. Will Chamberlain, officially 78, but that only includes assists and not blocks. James Harden, 74. Luka Doncic, number nine, 63. Bird, number 10, 59. Where's Draymond? 11, DeMontis Sabonis, 44. 12, Fat Lever, 43. Giannis, 40? 14, Bob Cousy, 33. Ben Simmons, who's barely fucking played the last three years. Ben Simmons is ahead of Draymond Green. Draymond Green is number 17. As long as this motherfucker been in the NBA, he's supposed to be a guy getting you points, rebounds, assists, but he's only at 31 career triple doubles in this era, this fast-paced era. Big men, on average now, shoot about 50 because it's so easy to score in the post. There's no... Resistance lanes wide open, so a lot of times bigs are getting alley oops and things of that nature, uh, uh, putbacks, uncontested layups. <clears throat> so bigs are shooting in a higher percentage than ever before. If you go back to two thousand, and uh, if you go back to nineteen, what is it? You go back to two thousand. Centers or big men in general were shooting around forty six, forty seven percent from the floor, on average. By 2010, that was around 50%, right? 2020, it was 54% because of the rule changes. Last year, the number was at 
Draymond is only shooting 49% from the floor. That would be great if he was a perimeter player, but for a guy that takes so few shots and most of his shots outside of threes are in the paint, that's terrible. Also, let's look at PER rating. A great player, a legendary player, I should say, has a PER rating over 25. Michael Jordan, as I said, is 27.9. Jokic is 27.9. LeBron's 27-something. Uh, Wilt's 26, even though if they counted blocks and steals, I think he'd probably be, like, where over Michael Jordan and all those guys. But, you know, all these guys, all the great players are around 25. All-star level players are around 20. Right? Good players, I would say 17 and up, right? <clears throat> An average player has a PR rating around 15. Average. Not great, not terrible, just good. 15. 15, right? Draymond Green's PR rating is 14.6. By comparison, Rick Smith's is 17.9. Uh, I think Bill Ann Beers is like 16.3 or something like that. Uh, Jamal Mashburn's is like 15.6 or 15.3. All these guys who aren't in the Hall of Fame have far greater PR ratings than Draymond Green. Michael Cooper has a better resume, far better resume overall than Draymond Green, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. I think he was a two-time champion in the WNBA, two-time coach of the year in the WNBA, Italian League MVP, five-time NBA champion. I think he was on eight diff eight different all-defensive teams, five first-team selections, 1986-87, a defensive Player of the Year award winner. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Robert Ory, seven-time champion, not in the Hall of Fame. But somehow, this guy supposed to be in the fucking Hall of Fame. Then, he goes around putting his hands on people. And he targets people who don't want none, who don't want no smoke. Purposely targets those people. He'll target, you know, the Rudy Bears and the Marcus Sabonis's and, you know, all these other motherfuckers. He, he seems to be targeting, for the most part, outside of Jordan Poole, so I made a good point. He always likes to target foreigners. Now, why is that the case? I don't know. Could be coincidence. Could be something there. Maybe he think they softer or something. Maybe he don't like the fact that they said that the NBA game is weak. I don't know. But he targets these people. But he don't target certain people. You know what I'm saying? So you step on DeMontis Sabonis' chest like he a fucking mat. Like he a fucking rub to wipe your feet with and shit. But when Tristan Thompson slapped you in the club in front of your business partner LeBron James and Chris Paul, you did nothing. They didn't make short work of your ass back in the day. All that tough guy shit, they didn't make short work of your ass Back in the day. The Charles Oakleys, the Xavier McDaniels, the Charles Barkleys. Go back a little bit further than that. Maurice Lucas, Kermit Washington. Hell, I even think Calvin Murphy would have bapped your fucking nose in. If I'm not mistaken, Calvin Murphy was a amateur boxer at New Martial Arts. He would have whooped your motherfucking ass. It would have been funny as hell. It would been like... See it on. Remember that scene? Remember that scene on Uptown Saturday Night? Was it Uptown Saturday Night? When uh, the dude, the Nicholas Brothers played uh, little, uh, mm. what was the character name? Little Seymour. And he beat the <laughs> out of Bill Cogman and them. It would have been funny seeing Kyle Murphy whoop your ass. He yeah, beat the fuck out of I 
That little motherfucker, Kyle Murphy, with that fucking Dracula hairline, be whooping your ass. But anyway, no, I just I just can't stand this dude, man. I really, I really don't. I can't stand this motherfucker, bro. Like at least, if you're gonna be that arrogant, if you're gonna be that much of an asshole, at least be great, bro. You can't be mediocre and talk shit like that. You can't. You can't have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant and Andrew Wiggins before whatever the fuck happened to Wiggins happened and pool for a short time. You can't have all these dudes doing all the work and you going around, you know what I'm saying, barking at people and picking fights. and, and You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest with you, let me end the video on this shit. What really gets me is how the media don't call this dude out on his bullshit. Like, you're the you're pretty much responsible for the demise of this team. Everything that's happened that's caused the, the decline of this team, you got a finger in it. You have a you have a role in it. You, your fingerprints are all over it. You ran Kevin Durant away. You ran Jordan Poole away for the most part. Even the organization traded him, but you ran him away. It's been a, and that affected Wiggins somehow. Even though I know some other stuff going on. Reportedly, Wiggins really was affected by Poole being traded. The team really don't fuck with you like that now. You're becoming a liability rather than an asset to the team. You ran Bob Myers away because he didn't want to have to deal with this bullshit. And it's over. Then you got a guy on the team, people forget... Chris Paul don't really like your ass. So, you know, it's, it's you. Everything points to you. I really wish sometimes they would trade this dude to the worst team in the NBA. But they're going to reward him and probably trade him to a good team. But I want this dude to get traded to a bad team like the Pistons. I want to see this dude get traded to the Pistons. And let's see what he does there. Let's see his greatness turn his team around and make them a playoff team. Pfft, fuck out of here.